Hey guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing good. Today's video is just going to be a quick video on how to make a custom like stinger transition. So for when you're streaming or if you want to use it in videos, it's just a simple little transition that you can make in After Effects really easy. If you haven't used it before, it should be very easy to follow. And yeah, so without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to obviously do is open up After Effects. And then once you've done that, you want to come down to new composition and you want to copy these settings that I've got here into your settings. So you've got 1920 by 1080, you can lock it if you want once it's set like that, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you want 60 FPS, full resolution, um, and you want it to be two seconds because the transition takes, I think, like less than one second or one second at most. And then background color, you can pick whatever you color. This really doesn't matter, but I'm going to leave mine as black and just click OK. Now, if you want your logo to be in the transition, all you've got to do is go File, Import, File, find where your logo is located and just import that. And then put it on your canvas and put it in the middle here. I, mine's already automatically done it uh, in the center, so I don't really need to adjust it. But if you need to move it, resize it or whatever, do that so that it's in the middle. Then you can lock this layer. Then what we're gonna do is Go to the rectangle tool at the top here. Uh, make sure it's just a normal rectangle and just make a big rectangle, like somewhat like that. Press a V. So put so you're on arrow tool and just rotate that about. You can press shift if you does it 45 degrees. And then you just want to make it so that it can cover the whole screen at some point in the transition. So something like this is fine. Let's make it a little bit smaller, actually. There we go, something like that. And then you just want to place it off the corner down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drop down, we're going to bring it above. We're going to make sure this uh, rectangle is above our logo and press triangle. Press, I'm going to press on the triangle so it drops down this little menu here. Then we're going to drop down transform and you're going to click a little keyframe. You're going to click this little stopwatch, which means start keyframing on the position. So it's going to place one keyframe on our timeline here. This little diamond thing that's placed in the timeline is called a keyframe. It's basically saying this is how you, this is where you want this square. This. It's basically saying this is where you want the rectangle to be when you start the animation. And then we're going to place another one for where we want it to end up. And then we can adjust how quick it moves and stuff from there. So I'm going to place one at one second. What you want to do is move the rectangle so that it moves all the way across the screen like that. So now that should have placed it. It should do it automatically if you just drag it and move it to where you want. If it doesn't, however, just come down here and press the little diamond button. And once it goes blue, you'll see it on the timeline as well that it's placed one there like that. And now you can already see already that if we press space bar, it moves across the screen like that. And now that's your basic animation. So what we can do from here is if we hit control D, that makes another one, place it under the previous one we've done drop down the transform little box again and let's just move these along about 10 keyframes i'm going to do it but you want the end keyframe to be once it's going to go a little bit faster so what that's going to look like oh we have to change the color of it as well so if we change the color of the second one to white it's going to look like that now you couldn't really see it at the end it's underneath so what we actually want is that to be above it sorry so we're going to move that back above and now and that's how it kind of looks but what we actually want is the blue to reveal our logo and then we want the white to come in and completely cover it up so what we're going to do is move this blue layer underneath the logo so like that and have our white layer on top and we're going to mask out the logo later but that's the next step so what we're going to do is once we've got it like this actually want to move the white a bit further along just so just so that our logo is actually revealed for a little bit longer and then how we're going to mask out our logo is what we're going to do is going to right click on our logo layer click mask new mask and then we see how it's like this what we're going to do is drop down the mask little menu at the side 
if you click the animation on the mask path, sorry, click the stopwatch on the mask path, right about when the mask, when the edge of this blue square starts to hit the corners, and then go to where the mask should be, should be revealing the whole logo now. Add another keyframe and just move this mask over it so that the logo is actually. You might have to move some of the points and change the shape of it and stuff, but that's okay. As long as it's got the whole logo so that we can see the whole thing. And now what we have is something like that. But you can see as well that after the white comes in, the logo is still there. So what we can do is if we zoom all the way out on our timeline, we can go right to the end of our logo layer. And just if we bring this back so that it disappears and the white covers it up. So once the white comes in about here, we can end this clip here so then the logo disappears. And then we can add a final cover color at the end so that it, um, it makes a nice little transition basically. So that's what we've got so far and it's looking pretty nice already. And then we can just duplicate this white layer again, make this another color, I'm gonna make it a light blue. And what we're going to do again is just move the keyframes a little bit inwards, but not as much this time. So now, now I like how this looks already. I'm going to change this color slightly just so it's a bit. So that is basically the transition, guys, but it's not completely done yet. What we can come and do, come and do here is, as you can see, it's not quite lining up with the edge of the um, box. So what we can do is on the mask, if we come back to here, so it should actually be revealed about here. So if we bring the mask just down to there, so it's going along that blue edge. And then the next frame, just make it reveal all of it like that. Again, you might have to make it bigger and adjust some of the points. As long as the mask is revealed the whole logo in the right layers. And there we go, and that gives a much, much cleaner effect. And you can make this last color however you want. You can change the colors around if you want the first one to be, if you want the first color to be darker, you can change those around. What I'm going to come and do in all of these keyframes actually is go back at the end and highlight them all, right click, go to keyframe assistant, and do easy ease on all of the uh, keyframes. And then basically, this will make the animation just seem a lot cleaner and a lot smoother, so it's not as robotic. It doesn't look bad with the robotic look like how it is already, but you'll see the difference after I've done all this easy easing. And there we go with that. Uh, as you can see though, on the mask one, it has kind of messed around with where the mask comes in. So if we move the mask, it starts about here, this next frame. And in fact, if we make it there, you know, that's not how you want it. We just need to adjust this mask. So maybe we shouldn't have done that mark. We should, we should have done this mask bit after. However, all you want to do is just adjust it. You just want to adjust it so as soon as the blue bit has uncovered the whole logo, then we want to make sure that it is all revealed. And there we have it. So that is how to create our Stinger transition. So this is what your final transition will look like. So you have your stream playing here, and then when you want to switch scenes, or if you're using it in a record and you want to switch shot, little transition comes across. If you want to speed it up, you can make all the transitions um, play quicker, but I like the speed of this. I think it's a nice little clean transition. And what you can do is if you bring the workspace thing down to here, down to where the animation ends, you can just have it so it loops like this. It's looping the whole two seconds. Uh, and then one final thing you can do before you render, render it 
this is the workspace bar. So if you find where your transition ends, so the frame where it ends like that, you can bring your workspace bar all the way down to here. I'm going to make it a second actually just so it's rounded up and it's a nice flat number. What you're going to want to do is go composition, composition setting. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to want to right click on the work, the work area and go trim comp to work area. So now it's just that animation looping. So that's how our transition looks, guys. So that is how to make a custom stinger transition for your streams and your videos. Leave a like if you did enjoy and you followed along with the tutorial. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video.